Welcome back to the Thrift Store Horde Season 2, right? We're Ooh. in Season 2 now. We've passed that year mark, and uh, my co-hosts are here, Kevin and Adam. Hey, Kevin. Hi. I can't believe we got a second season. <laughs> How many? Yeah, they, How the, many yeah the producers syndicated? called me and I picked it right up, man. Did we get a syndication deal, too, later on? What's that? Five seasons, probably? Yeah, I think we need to do a, a few more seasons to get that yeah. under, under our belt there. Adam, how are you, man? Oh, doing great out here. Yeah, I hope I'm coming through a lot clearer this time around. I got a new HD setup. We'll see. Season two, <laughs> got to upgrade, you know? Yeah, you. Uh, I see you standing up there, and I, I think I know why. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I bought a ring light for season two. Here, um, Adam, I tried it with Jason. Tell me if you can see the difference, okay? <laughs> <laughs> what what a what a is pleasant... it an actual ring like that it may as well be by the way before we get started uh wanted to give a quick shout out to our fellow uh watcher or fellow uh uh trn guy there chad droz sent us some awesome artwork to promote season two and he personalized it for each of us Kevin, you had a nice comic book layout there yeah. that uh, you'll be sharing. Adam, you had this VHS cover that was pretty grandiose. Awesome. Yeah. And I got the 45 single cover. So we'll be sharing all those. You probably have seen those if you are uh, subscribers, uh, if you follow us on our uh, individual pages. But uh, I'll be throwing it out there to social media. Chad, for your hard work, I did find uh, two tapes for you. Chad is the... Uh, he loves the sports tapes, right? So I got him NFL Super Duper Football Follies <laughs> from 1989 NFL Films video and Still Sealed Sports Illustrated's 1995 Year Ooh. in Sports came with your subscription and whoever got it with their subscription did not watch it. So <laughs> sealed up, ready to go to you, Chad. We appreciate uh you doing that for us and helping us to spread the word but uh, how y'all been doing kevin what's your experience been like uh, recently for thrifting or <laughs> yeah for thrifting for th yeah don't, you don't have to get personal <laughs> um for thrifting unfortunately it's been really dead and i think i think i found out why i think that there's someone hitting things up before me and i Ooh, think oh no same stuff yep um, I was at uh, one of the local stops and I saw people with, uh, you know, the barcode scanners there just going through everything and filling up carts full of books. Um, there was a uh, community um, book sale thing uh, two towns over that I couldn't make it to on time. One of my friends went the next day and said one day later of a four day sale completely picked over. Wow. So I think I think I got competition. I don't know if I got to get up earlier, go to different stores, um, wait them out, because I, I did have competition once before. I did have someone finding like stuff right before me and I kind of outdid them. But that was a while ago. So I'm out of practice with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to get that muscle memory back. Yeah, time to step up your game, man. Step up that game. Adam, how's it been going with you, man, at the first store? Uh, for me, it's been kind of interesting because it's summer, which means my kids are home, which means I got to wrangle them and take them to all their activities. My thrifting percentage of time spent in the store has been going down, but then the fines have been even more unique, as you'll see from this uh, season opener here. So I'm excited to share what I find, but I do have an update. The cliffhanger of season one was is my goodwill have they given up on vhs tapes mm -hmm. yes oh. they got rid of vhs entirely oh and no. my heart is sad like because they were my best like the most variety the greatest amount of turnover like they did such great work there with their vhs and just like so many other goodwills across the country only disney clamshell vhs that's all they will carry so it's a sad day interesting Adam, I have a question. <laughs> yes. Uh, are they overpricing the Disney clamshell VHS? Like when we all went through that a couple years ago, or is that a reasonable price for them now? No, they're still like all their tapes are 50 cents. All right. So 
but it's only like one little shelf like you know so there's probably like you know 10 or 12 tapes at a time on a shelf and that's it mm. that's very sad very sad vhs i have more vhs today than anything else wow. uh, a lot of it a lot of it is attributed to my dad we just got back from our drivecation i'm, I'm sporting here we go my clearfield bisons yes bisons with an s not bison <laughs> um, <laughs> one of my favorite things to do when we get home and go to Goodwill is to search for t-shirts like this, like my local t-shirts, my local sports teams, Penn State and the Pirates and the Steelers, all my uh, favorite sports teams. I can stock up on all of those shirts and things while I'm there. But uh, yeah, we just got back. Uh, we hit several. So we're driving from Alabama to Pennsylvania. and I wouldn't say we planned like little thrift store stops, you know, specific ones. But when we gas up, you know, check the Google Maps. If we got a thrift store close by, we can hit up, you know, stretch our legs a little bit, right? Come on, kids, you know, we got to stretch our legs. <laughs> and uh, we found a few places here and there. There's a couple, like I said, uh, in my hometown that we hit, and uh, going to see my mom about an hour away from where uh, my dad and my stepmom are. There's another goodwill there that we hit a couple times so yeah i i'm on overload right now of uh kind of new and uh some of my favorite places to hit other than locally here so that's uh, great I think, we, I think we've got a bunch of stuff so uh anybody want to go first Any, anything you're just itching to, to throw out there kevin what do you got oh we're all gonna right. go to kevin all right kevin what all you right, got go okay these are um, some finds that I didn't get a chance to show off uh, last episode. I had done a trip to, um, honestly, the biggest city in this area. I'd done a trip over with a friend and found a good amount, a goodwill there, which is random, like, you know, the random crap that I like <laughs> that probably no one else does, which is why they were all there. Uh, which way do I want to go with it? All right, I'll go this way. Um, a ton of these uh, Isaac Asimov um, science fiction magazines, uh, 90, sorry, 88, 85, 88, 79, 91, 78. Um, but I just, I usually grab these for authors, but they were dirt cheap. So I was just grabbing them for the covers, honestly. And I'll figure out what to do with them later. I got a friend that a lot of times will just take these off of me because he's more into the authors than I am. But I have a few that I collect. And you never know, like some of the stuff I just want to get an article out of, yeah, you know, just to look through and see what it's like. But those were dirt cheap. Um, this manga has come through work a lot. And I picked it up for a dollar. But it's been hugely popular, I guess, with kids. I know nothing about it. But um, brand new was 13, which I wasn't going to do, but I'll do it for a dollar just to see what's up. Uh, I love finding super weird pulpy paperbacks, as you guys know, and as Jason showed off last time, too, because he found a bunch of stuff I was jealous about. So I found <laughs> The Bride of Fu Manchu. Whoa. Ooh. I gotta imagine they probably couldn't release today. Yeah. But it looks just super fun, adventure-y and all. And then uh, I don't know if I've mentioned it before on here. I, re I really am not sure if I have. But I have an extensive collection of the old Mad mass market paperbacks old mm. magazine ones mm -hmm. so this is the same one but with two different covers three ring mad oh cool it was just re-released at some point um but i absolutely love these and it's just a cut up collection of mad magazine stuff for all of these one. but i i probably have 50 to 60 of them floating around oh wow and I've, anytime i find because they're always dirt cheap like no one cares about these so I always grab them. So I'm sure I have some that I have, you know, like these I have two covers of or that I have doubles of, but for, you know, a quarter, 50 cents each, I'm not worried about them. I'll go ahead. So yeah, that was a trip over to Next Town Over, one thrift shop once. I did pretty well for one quick stop there. Um, do I want what order? Oh, wait, no, wait, let me show this one off quick. <laughs> then I know the order I'm doing it in. All right. so. I'm trying to get into like the history of a lot of these things, the pulp, the comic books, whatever. And I, I've shown a lot of that stuff before. 
one thing I didn't know is all the stuff that uh, Amazing Stories, which was like a pulp uh, sci-fi magazine many, many years ago, all the work that they did and stuff we know now. Um, Amazing Stories was what uh, Young Force J. Ackerman was reading, and then he started his sci-fi collection and brought fandom to uh, the masses, pretty much. But this is a biography of the guy who was in charge of Amazing Stories magazine. So it's just cool. his history of form of the magazine, early sci-fi, early fantasy, bringing it out to the country, all the things he had to deal with along the way. And the funny thing is, I found this years ago and got rid of it accidentally. And I've been trying to find it again. And I couldn't, rem I couldn't remember his name. I couldn't remember the name of the book. I was just like, it's about the guy that found the magazine. <laughs> so gonna, you know, how am I going to find that online? But randomly... Uh, I found it in a thrift shop within the last couple of weeks. I grabbed it right away. I was so happy about it. In theory, sometime within the next 10 years, I'll actually sit down and read it, <laughs> learn all about it, but super excited about it. Love stuff like this for the history of things. And I think this one was a dollar because, again, I like the weird stuff no one else wants. Nice. All right. Very nice. Okay, well, I have, a, I have a couple books here I'll show off, just some kids' books that I was able to find recently. Uh, first one here is uh, some Pound Puppies. So Ooh. you gotta, gotta love a Pound Puppies storybook, right? It's just, a, sure. I had a full Pound Puppies bedroom. When I was like seven years old, I had the comforter, I had like everything. Like, I don't know why I was so into them, but I, I was doing Pound Puppies. Uh, another one here, I've never seen one like this before. It's a Little Orphan Annie storybook but it's not like you know it's not like uh based on the comic strip or anything it's like actual illustrations you know with like yeah. a lot of story so i don't know i'm assuming what year was this um does she have 1982 so i assume it came out with the movie but but yeah it's interesting I, I guess it basically is an adaptation of the movie if you look at the art there so uh, but the best part is the inscription here because it says, guess who this book is for? <laughs> <laughs> Grandma was getting a little cheeky. Um, but this is the one I wanted to ask you guys if you knew anything about this. Kindles. Kindles, not related to Amazon and their tablet. Uh, many years before. <laughs> But it says here, welcome to the magical land of the Kindles. It's a fantasy forest where music makes the honeybud trees grow. <laughs> the Kindles love to sing with gladness, but now an evil sorceress wants to end their happiness forever. It's up to Sparkly to lead the Kindles out of danger. Kindles. I, I have a guess. Heard Who owns it? Uh, let's see if there, I mean, this is a Scholastic Publishing, but it doesn't uh -huh. say... Yeah, by Design House Inc. The illustrations, but it doesn't say anything about Scholastic. So no, because it screams like a Hallmark one. You know, yeah. come in, get right. the book and the stuffed animal for a year, and some of this stuff got popular, but some of it didn't. Oh my God, that's terrifying looking. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's almost like a ripoff of Trolls and Gummy yeah. Bears and stuff. I don't know. Uh, but also in my book uh, finds here a comics, of course, right? When I can find them, I'm thrilled. And so I recently uh, found the last few issues of Count Ducula. Okay, oh, so, nice. Yeah, so these are star comics from, well, it's weird. Inside they say star comics, but there, you know, the corner box, it says Marvel. So mm -hmm. I don't know why they wanted to have a, you know, the branding is Marvel. But what's interesting, this one in particular, is a Friday the 13th. It's called A Lightmare on Elm Street. And they have Freddy Kakaruger. Freddy <laughs> Kakaruger. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Yeah, what, what they thought they were getting away with with that one. But that was an interesting story. It's something you don't expect. But what's also cool is that this was split with Danger Mouse, if you look at the corner box also. Wait, so what? Half, half Count Decula, half Danger Mouse. Oh. So. Yeah, so and if you remember, like looking like at the cartoons at the beginning, they had that same opening, the da, 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 you know, yeah, they had the weird British. British Parliament building or whatever. Oh. Yeah, so, um, but the best part of all of these, you know, I have up to issue 15, 9 through 15, but this is the last issue ever of Count Ducula. Oh, they knew it was coming, it wasn't a sudden abrupt cancellation. So, 
it's just interesting to see like the other stars, the subscriptions to the Starbucks you could get, but this uh, is the end yeah. of Count Dracula. So I love <laughs> Star Comics. Yeah. So, one, I didn't know Danger Mouse was in it. So now yeah, I, have, I, I love Danger Mouse. Now I got to get them. Um, the logos there, the Marvel Comics logos, that was the newer, like early 90s Marvel Comics logo with the almost like graffiti for the comics underneath. Yeah, it, it has both. That's what's like. So issue nine had the old ones. Yeah, it is weird then. Yeah. 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 And then the last they, issue changed. Yeah. When they switched, all the Star Comics switched to that Marvel Comics logo because they didn't do a, star, a new Star Comics logo. Yeah. But to have Marvel on that one is weird. It really strange. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so those are my book finds. And I, I was just excited to get all the Count Duculas. You know, pretty standard, matches the cartoon. It's what you would expect. But then the addition of Danger Mouse was the super bonus. So That's cool. I didn't know that either. Those are the kinds of series that I like, you know, like 15 issues. Real fun to try to collect those. All right. So I got some books and comics. Uh, we'll start out. Of course, I'm always looking for the... Uh, movie adaptations there's uh the mummy returns hey and uh got some color photos on the inside as well from the movie so that was fun to find uh i found an issue volume four number six of super mag with mork and mindy on the cover <laughs> what is that i had I never grabbed that too i had never seen this before it's uh it's a lot of fun stuff in there. Like it shows, uh, there's Popeye. You know, what is that? Mrs. Doubtfire that he's dressing up as? No, I time. thought that was it too. But it's, uh, let's see. So he did. He was lady. at an Andy Kaufman concert at Carnegie Hall, dressed as a grandmother on stage for the whole show, and then he took it off at the end. I wonder if that's what that's about right there. That's yeah, about the right it, yeah, Andy Kaufman's grandma. There it is. Yep. Yep. I called that, it. Okay. That's it. So <laughs> yeah, there's some stuff in here about Pam Dauber, and there's even a a, a centerfold poster. Nice. You gotta love it, man. I saw that and I was like, oh my gosh. And the size of this thing is really small. You know, it's uh smaller than a comic, bigger than a reader's digest. There's also like little mazes and stuff in here too and well, it reminds me of dynamite magazine it must have been yeah. it, it kinda, yeah it kind of is teased the next issue which was uh charlie's angels oh. so this came out in 1980 i think or at least this issue yeah from the xerox corporation so uh i saw that and was like that is really cool now another one that i have been loving to collect are these real small sticker books well they're 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 little uh, uh, just regular, you know, storybooks and stuff. But uh, we see this little, uh, I'm trying to hide the, you know, you get your <laughs> stickers inside, right? And I collected one that was uh, the Bigfoot monster truck. There were some that were like uh, unicorns, just kind of random stuff, teddy bears. My wife found this one. It's the oh, Ghostbusters. Yes. Now, does that say featuring the ugly little spud? It does. Yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that too and just went berserk. So there you go. Just beautiful. <laughs> All right. What's the sticker status? So inside, you know, they usually put the stickers right here. And you can see the glue used to be there. Uh, but in this one on the back, it showed you where to place the stickers, and there they are. The stickers are Whoa! in there. All right. So you at least get the graphics about the sticker. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, That's man, great. just I mean, I see in this book, it was five dollars, and I was like, I don't care how much it is. Look at this uh, <laughs> illustration here on the inside front cover. Oh, that's I had never seen that one before. Oh, wow, that's like a merging of the real Ghostbusters and the movie universe. That's really you know what it it looks like maybe Mort Ducker from Mad Magazine. Oh, okay, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, adapted by Chris Brown. Trying to see if there's any other. There's no really uh, credits in here. So. Yeah, the Antioch Publishing Company. It's the same company that put out all these little, you know, square books. But in Ghostbusters, I mean, come on. That was just amazing. Oh, and 
So I found that at my uh, local, used to be a department store, three-story department store in my Not hometown. a Hills? Not a Hills. No, this is <laughs> a local owner. It's called Light Singers. And now they've converted it. It's three floors of thrift. Ooh. But when I checked out, they were still using a dot matrix <laughs> uh, printer with my credit card. So I don't know how that works, but shout did out they, to them. Did they fly the card with the shot? That's what I'm with with the no, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Adam, I think you showed this one off recently. Cool that's, a that, oh, that's, that's a different one. That's a different one. Okay. That's a different edition. So this that's is the cool. Archie comic group. Kool Aid Man, Wacky Warehouse, Grand Opening, and Free Stuff. I haven't even opened it up yet, but oh. I have a different one uh, uh, as well. And I saw that one. I was like, I think that's the one that Adam got. So this is number, actually, Kool Aid Man number five. Oh, I didn't wow. realize they did that many. I thought it was just kind of more of a one off thing. Uh, found a copy of the Ewoks. Hey. Uh, there's your start. With the star logo. Uh, number eight. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the first issue of the Ewoks I've found. Had to pick this up. <laughs> <laughs> Married with Children, uh, number three from Now Comics. I have a few of those, and they are not cheap to buy, like on eBay. Hmm. Uh, and then what really blew my socks off are these last few issues here. I had not seen uh, issues of Batman and Action Comics this early, just kind of laying out for sale. So I found Batman number 175. I think these are from like the early 60s. Yeah, it looks about right. But just seeing that that logo, I just, you know, I'm like, this, these things are jumping out at me. And there's Batman 201. So those were, I was like, I... I think these were three bucks Ooh, and they're not nice. terribly, you know, it's not a, it's somewhat of an investment. I mean, uh, you can probably get $10 out of these on eBay from looking, but action comics, three fifteen. just seeing that action comics logo. I'm like, yeah, just jumps out at you. Three sixteen. There we go. Supergirl's choice of doom. <laughs> Uh, 317 Action Comics. Ooh, and I'm not a huge yeah. Action Comics fan, but uh, man, these just look glorious. And then 329, check that one out. So much rainbow with Batman and Superman in yeah, this. Era. Very much so. It's killed or be killed when Superman faces a showdown with the ultimate enemy. Hmm. Wonder who that could be. But uh, those were my. Uh, books and comics that i found most of which were at that uh antique mall slash uh department store uh what else you got for us kevin all right so i'm gonna do a, a comic one um local store had bought a box or box was donated or whatever it was and i happened to come in before they even had a chance to go through it oh and just they're just like just grab some so nothing that's like worth a ton of money but it's pretty much like you know take it take however many you want for like five bucks all right so i found weird i found wizards oh <laughs> not wizard so magazine, magazine. But like, magazine. no 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 like stuff stuff you've discussed yeah and i found things that uh are for my own collection all right so we'll start with weird I had to get this. I have no idea about anything, but I found Webbit's Revenge. <laughs> just the okay. weirdest looking thing, and I don't care. I had to get this. Uh, That's just so bizarre. Uh, as I believe as discussed recently on Wizards, she and Cyblade. Yeah! So happy to find that. With even the bad girls of Wizard on the back cover. <laughs> so Excellent. happy to find that. Speaking of bad girls and wizard, and of course, speaking of stuff I collect, Red Sonia, this is what's considered a virgin cover because there's no logos. There's yeah. no logo, there's no price, there's no nothing on it. That stuff is on the back, so they can scan it at the store. But the front's considered a virgin cover, which is considered a variant. Even if it's the same cover with Red Sonia across, this is a different cover, technically. 
Hmm. So that's uh, sometimes they're worth more money. I didn't. I just grabbed it because it was a cute, cool Red Sonia thing. Um, I am trying, and the rest are ones I'm trying to do full, complete runs. But I have to find it on its own. I can't do eBay. Like, that's not as fun. So I'm trying to get all of Vigilante. Uh, Vigilante is on uh, the Peacemaker series, but I read uh, the first volume a couple years ago. However, only the first 12 issues out of 50-something are collected. So I'm tracking down the whole series. But it's very much like uh, you took the law into your own hands and then what it does to someone's mind, and that's why it ends at issue 50, because it ends, ends. Oh. It's one, yeah, it's one long storyline of his mental trip and i was loving it but then i ran now so now i'm trying to get the whole thing uh weird marvel comic and again i think there's like 25 issues i'm trying to get them all but i found what the number three yes spider <laughs> ham and i uh oh raven the hunter well that's an easy one at least yeah parody of craven's last hunt one of those covers that's awesome yep. and then i am trying to get all of these and i think there's like 125 100 something but I'm trying to get all of Marvel Age. Oh, it's awesome. Yep. So I found issue 94 and 119. I didn't have either of these. So all like the ones I'm going for my personal collections, I actually didn't have them at all. I got the app that keeps track of all of it. I was super happy. Um, Adam, I don't know if you've seen the debate over this and previews and everything, like what counts as a first appearance? Does it right, yeah. count as first appearance and all? So some of these are getting up there, and it's stupid because that's not a first appearance. But some of them I might go ahead and get on eBay before they get any pricier. <laughs> but as I'm organizing, because I'm trying to like downsize my comics and a few other things there, I want to keep it nice and neat. I want to be able to like go to my comics. Right now, they're all in the closet, and that's just not you know doable. I see your collection. I see certain other ones that you can access it. So I want to do that. I was out at local do Dollar Tree, and I found these. Hmm. So it's at Dollar Tree, which means now it's Dollar Twenty Five, whatever. <laughs> they are Dollar Twenty Five Tree. Yeah, that's what yeah. we call it. <laughs> They're magazine holders. So I grabbed a ton of them, and nice. what I'm going to end up doing is organizing all the comics, printing out something, having the logo right here. I want to do it for my Wizard magazines as well. Great. The other ones, but all the comics just like fit in there nicely and then I can look and see what I actually have. This is not organized at all right now. <laughs> then I can actually look and see what I have and not be, you know, I could just go and they'll say like, you know, Avengers or whatever and mm -hmm. I can find it and not be digging through um it's between 20 to 25 short boxes that are in the closet right now. What? Yeah. Yeah. But it's ridiculous. I mean, Adam with like the research you do for Wizards, how many times are you looking for something you know you have it somewhere, but where is it? Mm -hmm. You know, and I just I'm I'm too old to deal with that anymore. So if you got a Dollar Tree in your area, check it out. If you got these, uh, they actually fit very well on bookshelves. Okay, excellent. That's <laughs> yeah, that's all oh. I got for that round. I I will I will warn you. Uh, my third round is Wizards influenced as well. All right, can't wait. <laughs> all right, um, I'm gonna get into some toys here, uh, just because I'm I'm. In find some random fun stuff here and there. Uh, my first one here is a Tony the Tiger stuffed, basically Beanie Baby era. This is the Beanbag Breakfast Bunch, is what this <laughs> promotion was called. I don't know if they came in the boxes. I'm assuming you had to mail away for them, or maybe they came, like, you know, shrink-wrapped on the front, sure. uh, but it still has all the tags. Everything is still attached, so right. maybe even at the supermarket, it's like, it even as the hanging little plastic tag, so... I, that actually tells me that I guess it was in a store, just must have been in the cereal aisle, but it was just in such, in such great condition. I just thought that was a lot of fun. I don't know if you guys remember these at all. There was one, I'm curious to see what else there was. Yeah, there was one version in a blue box, like the blue yeah. box with the frame around it. But right, I, don't I looked on the eBay, same. and that's what I found mostly. Were yeah, those. but not the same yeah. as that, though. Um, also, I did share this on social media because I was so excited when I found it, but Right about the time that Jurassic World, the latest movie came out, I found this vintage Kenner Jurassic Park Ford Explorer just in wonderful condition. I mean, it's just beautiful. Mm. Uh, and luckily I had uh, basically excavated from my uh, 
a mother-in-law's uh, basement. I was digging around in there. It's her basement because I got in trouble for leaving bags and bins open down there. And she went down. She's like, Adam, you got to seal these up. I was like, I'm oh, sorry, but <laughs> I got the Alan Grant figure to go inside. So nice. yeah, so that that's ready to go. So that was uh, just awesome to find it. And my youngest has just been putting my Muppet babies from McDonald's inside. So the Muppet babies are going to Jurassic <laughs> Park. Um, <laughs> I would watch that movie. Yeah, I was I was say, that. it'd be fantastic. Right? And if they were still going in there that late into the 90s, I'm sure they would have done that purity. Um, <laughs> But the other one here, I was trying to see if I had any other toys that I was going to grab, but this is the, the big one actually here. And that is Fireman. Okay. This is, is 1984. Okay. This is a, a Japanese to made toy that is a little <laughs> climbing fireman. Okay. So here, here's the top of his ladder. Okay. And he gets up and he ticks this over to spray the water but it's it's so it's even taller than this i had to take out a few of the ladder rugs but there is just this little guy that go you know he just climbs up now unfortunately it's not working i put in some new c batteries and i was like ah but there might be a way to get it working if i could figure out what the issue is but just to see something this vintage. I mean, these were like these, you would see these in weird like electronic stores and whatever, you know, back in the day, just these, these Japanese toys that made their way across, you know, for people to buy. There was one other one when I was there and it was like this puppy toy, you know, this, you know, electronic puppy toy. But I was like, this is the one that just is so classic and so mm -hmm. beautiful. So I had to pick that up for nothing else, just to set it, you know, <laughs> set it on my shelf somewhere. There was a similar toy at Target like a year or two years ago that was Santa climbing. He's, working. There. He's going. There he I goes. Was talking. He's climbing. It's the magic of the thrift store horde. Here he comes. <laughs> oh my He's god. He's gonna make it to the top. I, wow, I just wasn't holding them right, I guess. All right, here we go. He did it. He's saving the day. Up. Oh, and he's going back he down. <laughs> that wow. was awesome. It works. Wow. I'm so jealous. That's so <laughs> ridiculous. You need you need the the price is right music of the um hiker. The yodeler. Yodeler. Yeah. Yes. Alpiner. Yeah. <laughs> do -de -do -de -do -de -do. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> all right. So uh and of course the biggest toy of all for me though is uh so my mom came to visit the week after 4th of July with my sister. They hadn't been out to our new house yet, so they made the road trip. And who do you think got me into thrift store shopping? It is my mom. She took me to garage sales every Saturday. We would go to the thrift stores like she is the ultimate thrifter. And so I, I had to show her the sites in our new town and where everything was. And uh, so we went to the one thrift store that is still carrying VHS. And I was got excited. I found a new like VHS drawer set. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get that. Or a couple tapes that I got that I'll, I'll show off a little bit later. But then as we walked around, uh, I was able to find something extra special. I saw a case. There is a case, a mysterious box. What could be in there? And so uh, I opened it up. And there was a vintage camcorder from the 80s in all its glory okay oh and it is just a beautiful thing i mean it is fantastic like this is literally all my friends in high school at junior high i walked around with a camcorder on my shoulder everywhere when we hung out at school and i just recorded 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 a lot of the tapes went missing unfortunately but the, I, I've done some testing. People who follow me on social media have seen this. If you follow my YouTube channel, I've done a test. What I'm calling, uh, you know, <laughs> it's it's not quite vintage video, right? But it's uh, <laughs> it's new vintage video. So it, it looks old, but it's shot now. So, but it's just uh, I couldn't be more happy. I've been looking forward to these forever. So it's a glorious day. The ultimate toy. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And and in the case too, you know. Yeah. I saw your uh, your filming when you're uh, what were you doing eating or eating McDonald's or something there on Facebook oh, the, and 
Yeah, well, there was Mall Madness. We were playing. Oh, no, no, no. That's right. Mall Madness. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, You were playing Mall Madness. I saw that. My sister brought it with her, the vintage electronic Mall Madness, and I filmed the, you know, the whole game. Yeah. Yeah, The resolution on that is just glorious. Oh, it's perfect. (laughs) Wow. What a fine. That's it. That just trumps everything that I have. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) No, I've I've got a few little odds and ends that I found that was pretty. eclectic to me uh i do look at the little tins and things every once in a while and i like to look uh you know pepsi coke those kinds of little things i found one from uh 1988 here's a little coke tin oh the, uh, like norman rockwell scenes on the side it's and it you know it i couldn't tell what was inside to start out I yeah <laughs> yeah i couldn't like, smell it or anything but uh <clears throat> like this came from something? this came from a store called the nutcracker in shipsawana indiana so if you're from there shout out to you don't know how it got to pennsylvania but it did <laughs> uh the other thing that just jumped off the shelf to me was uh you guys remember getting uh ice cream in the mini baseball helmet yes as a kid uh, i found four of them all together on the shelf and they were in great shape so there's the atlanta braves there's the chicago cubs and of course my pennsylvania teams of course i'm a <laughs> i'm a pirates fan but there's the pirates and the phillies and uh i'm just gonna start scooping ice cream now in these because <laughs> i remember you know those that was like a big deal to get the mini helmets and trying to collect them and and things around. That was about the time when uh, I was really into baseball cards too. So that was really fun. And then for a dollar, uh, I got a fun little figure, bendable figure. Yes, it's the nice. cool pod. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So you get a thumbs up from the cool spot. You're cool, man. <laughs> So pretty good shape. I cleaned him up a little bit. He's got a little couple things here, but for a dollar, I was like, yeah, he's coming home with me and I'm going to put on a shelf somewhere. So there's a few little toy and just random stuff, odds and ends. I've got a, I got my VHS tapes and some music to show off coming up. So Kevin, back to you. All right. So these are some uh, finds that I may have ignored if not for certain podcasts. <laughs> so uh, these I'd never heard of before, hmm. but I was uh, super curious about it. And that is a little series called Star Wreck. No, no, not Star Trek. Star Wreck. <laughs> <laughs> series. This is three, four, and five. Wow. A series of parody novels making fun of Star Trek. So we have the cruise of Captain John Lucy Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And Captain James T. Smirk. <laughs> uh, let's see, with the USS Endocrine. <laughs> uh, let's see, we got Mr. <laughs> Mr. Smock. That's not really a good <laughs> one. Uh, lost crewmate Yasha Tar. <laughs> Let's see. This one features uh, Counselor Detroit. Oh wow! Uh, oh, they gotta go to the Fountain of Love, then the Fountain of Truth, and then the Fountain of Youth. <laughs> uh, while avoiding the Roman Newmans. <laughs> and uh, then this one continues with uh, Commander Bungie Man Crisco. <laughs> so i mean it's like they're super small yeah. you know take like no time at all to read these how many pages exactly 150 give or take like it'll take no time at all but that was just so silly i had to get it speaking of something that sounds so silly and yet there's people on these podcasts that tell me that they're good so i had to give it a chance adam they're not only in comic book form no, they're not in pog form. They're in book form. And it's Elf Quest. No way. <laughs> no. Really? I didn't have a clue. No. So they're all Wendy and Richard uh, Penny. Penny. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so Journey to Sorrow's End, which apparently this one is as well, but a different cover. Uh -huh. Like, all right, whatever, I'll grab both for them. And then this one is Elf Quest Winds of Change, Volume 3, The Blood of Ten Cheats. And this one's actually an anthology one. Um, I recognize Mercedes Lackey because she's written like a hundred other fantasy novels over the years. But I like I haven't read Elf Quest. I got mm -hmm. a few issues floating around that I've bought as part of like I'm buying a collection of a hundred issues, they're in there, but I've never read it myself. But I've become curious about it. I'm willing to give it a chance. And unlike some people, I loved the Bone comic <laughs> the fantasy series. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm willing to give it a try, but I found these for nothing, you know, next to nothing. I'm like, all right, let me grab them. They'll at least look cool with my, you know, comic novel collection stuff. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, su I, I, God knows when I'll read it. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, fascinating. Like number one on the list. I mean, so, I'm, I'm more into Star Wrecked, obviously. Oh, that's, yeah. That's that so cool. hilarious. <laughs> Are there that illustrations in there, Kevin? Are there illustrations in which? In either? In the Star Wreck. There actually is. I didn't oh, realize. Wow. Oh, yes. No, I didn't even realize. I just grabbed them for the cover. I hadn't even flipped through them yet. <laughs> oh, there's a bunch. Oh, this is going to be great. Oh, good. What just, in the world? <laughs> I don't know. Just out of curiosity, when did those when were those published? The Star Wreck ones. Star Wreck is it's got to be mid 90s because they talked about Deep Space Nine. They were paired. Yeah, 92. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, 92, 93, and 93. Yeah. <laughs> Benjamin Chris. The Elf Quest <laughs> has a couple. The Elf Quest one's got a couple pages of art too. Like that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, John I, Lucy Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbest joke, but it's a good one. By the way, <laughs> by the way, guys. Um, well, Jason already knows this. Adam, I guess it's a warning. Jason, why no one tell me that they go from being funny sarcastic to attacking you sarcastic in the blink of an eye, and it hurts. But it hurts more when they're actually funny too. Because <laughs> my son told me that uh, only lame people make puns. <laughs> and dad jokes are the worst puns. <laughs> like bang. Yeah. I should read them your Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just go through my Facebook and all those. I get there's a fun follow on Instagram. I think it's uh Dad Say Jokes or something. That's where I get them all. Just shout out to them. All right. That all is, right. Yeah, I got one more thing, which oh, I think okay. we all do. Um no, I'm saying like I got one more round and that's oh, one list. more round. Yeah, that's my, like, oh, my God thing. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, no, those were great. Uh, it sounds like Jason and I have some VHS to show off here. So I am, I, like, like I said, I've got this one shop that I could go to now that's downtown, and I, I have to take that trip to find things. But I've been finding some really unique, like, ex-rental tapes and other just random stuff. And the first one here uh, is just, like, it's a sequel. I need to see the first one. I've always heard people talk about it, but best of the best two Ooh. with eric roberts so that martial arts tournament series you know <laughs> i don't know what the setup one? even is for that what's that i thought two was supposed to be the better one it probably is i would imagine oh there we go there's the first one hey <laughs> that was in my dad's collection i think uh, chad <laughs> might have claimed that now uh, the other one here was a random nicole kidman film i'd never heard of called flirting and it's a screener copy, so I'm interested to watch this. I mean, it's a huh. it's it's like eighteen yeah. there. Yeah, super young. This must have been yeah. right after BMX Bandits, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is another one. Speaking of you know younger stars, I so Johnny be good. But yeah. the reason this caught my eye is that this is a special edition. So not only do you see like the X Mental stuff here. But it tells you that it includes a bonus Judas Priest music video, okay? <laughs> but also down here, okay, it's telling you, it says re-rated R featuring new sexually suggestive footage available only on video cassette. 
Oh so that, my gosh. That, that was the selling point of this edition that you want to rent it. You didn't see it in theaters. You know, you didn't like <laughs> the PG-13 version. So watch the rated R version, you know. Too hot for theaters. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and then this is the one that just the cover, I would have rented this had I seen it back in the day, but it's called True Identity. But if you look here, you know, so it's kind of like a white chicks, but white dude, you know, so, huh. and it's, it's apparently a British like comedian who does all these characters. He has kind of like a James Brown looking character here and all of that. But the craziest part of it here, where is it? Uh, is the character's name. Yeah. So the character's name, he's a fast talking actor named Miles Pope. No relation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, last thing here, though, I picked this up just because, like, you know, I've been finding a lot of sealed VHS, too, but it's just kind of like, you know, everyday titles. They're selling, but it's fine. But this one, uh, you know, there's the nostalgia has got to come around to DVD very soon here. They're getting rid of VHS. It's going to be DVD. I found a sealed copy of Shrek 2. Okay, this is the DVD. It's a full screen DVD, but as it has the junior novelization inside this. No, uh, cool. the, yeah. So it's kind of this old style, you know, like we used to get the CDs of these long boxes. Yeah, yeah, things, yeah. Right? But it's still got, you know, the original price tag and everything on that. So, nice. yeah, I mean, it's just a unique piece of history. It's still sealed. So I was like, I got to grab that. Now, the last one here is the tease for my last round because. Why would I pick up a copy of the Pelican Brief? I have no interest in the Pelican Brief. Now, soon you will have your answers in the final closing <laughs> moments of Thrift Store Horror Season Two, Episode One. <laughs> Commercial. Goes okay. Through. Well, I'm going to save my movies for the finale as well. I say movies because it's not all VHS. Uh, but I'm going to give you my uh, quick, real quick, my music here. I uh, did find a couple of singles, one of which I had heard of. The other two I had not. <laughs> uh, so I got uh, Paul Abdul's Promise of a New Day <laughs> from the, the later album of hers. Uh, I did find another copy of the Vision Quest soundtrack. So I thought I'd just, you know, throw that in the old giveaway bin. Somebody will get that. Nice. And these were all like a quarter apiece. So, yeah. Um, I did find one that was sealed. It's Nashville's newest stars featuring Laurie White, Kenny Chesney, and John Randall from 1995. So we know one of I those. Have... <laughs> What's that? I said I know one of those names. <laughs> yeah, I knew Kenny Chesney, um, but I don't have many that are still sealed up, and maybe that's his first appearance. You never know. Yeah. You know? Oh, it's his rookie. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> And then finally, here's another uh, special maxi cassette. Um, this is a uh, special maxi cassette with the purchase of any cassette or CD in this store. So it was like a freebie to give away. And it had a couple different uh, artists on it. One is Willie Davis and mm -hmm. one is Iona. But the fun thing about this is it opens up. Look oh. at the, I don't have a single that opens up. It has a little flap on the front and uh, actually has, uh, you know, pricing and uh, it's not like a coupon, but um, tells you all about the uh, two artists, you know, on the inside gives you their like bios. So I thought that was really cool that I, you know, that was mainly the only reason I picked that one up because <laughs> it had that flap. Uh, and then, of course, you all know what I collect. I like those 45 picture sleeves. I found uh, the safety dance men at work. Whoa. Men, at work. Yeah. men without hats. Wrong men. So men many men bands. Yeah, the 80s. <laughs> Backed up with uh, living in China. We have George Michael. And that one is one more try. Hmm. <laughs> that was kind of strange. Just has the title on one yeah. side and a picture of Mr. Michael there. This one is special. I love this duet on my own. Patti LaBelle and Michael McDonald. They actually recorded the song separately. And the music video, you never see them together. They like filmed it on both coasts. It's so crazy. Uh, 
I thought that was pretty cool. There's some fun art on the back of that one too. Uh, I picked up this. I could only find the sleeve. I searched through a ton of loose discs that were sitting there hoping to find it. But since it is the Blues Brothers, I had to pick up the sleeve and maybe somewhere I'll get the record down the road. Yeah. But that's uh, give me some love and uh, had not known that they had released that uh, on 45. And then finally, a random Brian Adams in the heat of the night. The reason I picked this one up, obviously, I collect the picture sleeves. I'm going to take this out because I'm getting a glare. But it still has the original Ames price tag on it. <laughs> so there we go. There we go. Ames was my local store. You know, I found this in my hometown there. So, uh, and there's one of, uh, there's a VHS tape that actually has an Ames sticker on it too. That I was like, oh yes, Ames. Ames and Hills. I, one of them bought the other one out at some point. Oh. I think Ames I think, bought out Hills. Yeah. Um, sad thing was like, Ames was not doing much better. Right. Like, Hills, Hills made a lot of mistakes. Real, I was working at Hills at the time before they got bought out they made a really? lot of mistakes real fast and they were struggling for money i don't know if it, i don't know if there was like hedge fund tied into it or whatever <laughs> but it was so bad they did not have bags before black friday like that's oh, how financial wow. stuff went. yeah so then ames oh. bought them out real fast but did you ever go into like an ames that was in a good building that like the floors weren't cracked and the ceiling wasn't leaking uh no no. Every Ames, every because well, before Ames was James Way, I actually found uh, it was a little uh, wooden train set that was like for Christmas at a at the thrift store in Clarion, and it had a James Way sticker on it. I had to take a picture just because of that because I believe it was Ames that bought out James Way, and then that's probably why they you know they're going in the same buildings. The buildings are you know, 10 or 15 years old when they took them over. But yeah, it was, it was a mess. I, I go, the, the old Ames building now in my hometown is an Ollie's and I go in there and it looks, you know, they've got, they fixed it up in there. I'm like, this is not right. No. <laughs> there needs to be like leaky ceilings and, you know, everything else. But that was all my music. So let's hit the last round here. All right. So how do I word this nicely? <laughs> All right. We go to thrift stores. We go to yard sales. We go to weird places. Some say it's kind of dirty, trashy. People that don't understand this. You know, you're going through someone else's junk. I don't care. I'm finding cool stuff. I also don't live in the town where I grew up. So it's not like I'm going to like run into a whole lot of people anyways. So what am I embarrassed about? Random people I've never met before and will never meet again might not like that I'm doing this. So that extends to if I'm driving and I see like recycling day, I've I've been driving and seeing saw like three huge boxes of books sitting out there. So I just grabbed them and I figured it out later. Uh, I was going to the playground one day with my kid and there is a giant tote of Imagine Next out in the trash. Whoa. We grabbed, we grabbed it all. Wow. Yeah. So sometimes I find stuff that people are giving away and I'm just like, screw it. I'll toss it in here. I'll figure it out later. If it's trash, I'll throw it out. But if it's not, it's worth me taking the 10 minutes at home to check it out. So there are two of these. They're pretty and I could sell them, but they're going to look so pretty on shelf. I'm not going <laughs> to. First up is this beautiful collection of Lord of the Rings. Hmm. Very nice. All three books plus The Hobbit, leather bound. Leather, leather. Oh my gosh, yeah, very leather nice. Bound. Very small print, like Bible print <laughs> to fit into it. Which, fine, whatever. You know, it looks so pretty. I don't care. I got copies of all these, but just for how even this I think is a little leather for it. But for oh, how nice. nice this looks i'm keeping it yeah so what happened did someone have a fight did someone died someone like i don't know i don't care well the funny thing is apparently this person though had a theme he was going for because of course it was a he 
ما تنزهي Do we want to guess? <laughs> Story of ice and fire, whatever. <laughs> oh, you were correct. There you go. Game yeah. of Thrones. It are is those cool. are those leather or just hardback? They're leather too. Oh wow, wow! So pretty. Again, super small. Wow. Now it was pointed out to me because uh, people were looking at this. Um, it looks like they took a paperback and re and like took the paperback off and put the leather binding on. So some of it's cut like real close. Hmm. But that could just, I mean, we've all bought, yeah, this one like real close to the margins there. I think we've all bought paperbacks that like there's a page that's cut a little off before. Um, I've gotten comics that like a page is like folded inside and it's not right. really cut yeah. correctly. The words are still on there. If the word's at the very bottom of the page, I don't care. The word's still on there. Right. But yeah, I mean, like, they're a little dusty as if they were on someone's shelf, but they're not trash. They're not garbage. Like, why would you get rid of this? I don't understand. Yeah. So I looked up the prices for both, and it's not bad. Like, I could easily do it, but I think it's just going to look so pretty on a shelf. Yeah, that's crafty. great. Yeah, so I, I'm going to get, I think I'll get rid of, I got some of the Game of Thrones ones. I think I'll just get rid of these. The only problem is the Lord of the Rings ones I have are like old paperbacks. So I want to keep them because they are old, but I don't know, I'll figure out which one's like the reading copy, I guess, later on. Free. Like, I do not understand people getting rid of stuff like this. At least sell it. And th that's my only other guess. Maybe there was a yard sale. And they were asking too much, or they didn't get the right people going to it, or something like that. But I don't know if either of you guys have had a yard sale. Come like Sunday, shoot me an offer. Yeah. Just so they don't bring it back inside. Right. Instead of putting it on the, instead of throwing it out. Like even if you got five bucks, it's five bucks more than you got thrown out on the curb. So I don't know. My benefit though, I'm happy with it. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's very cool. <sighs> All right, the grand finale here. So we left you off. There's a VHS copy of the Pelican Brief, something I did not intend to add to my library previously. Why? Well, I was walking through this one uh, thrift store. It's kind of like this church-based thrift store, and it's run by a bunch of old ladies, and it takes some time to put stuff on the shelves. And lately, they've just been leaving carts of stuff, like whether it's VHS or books or whatever, and just randomly like next to the aisle where eventually they will put it on the shelves, but it'll stay there for a few days. So I love digging through the, the shopping carts and seeing what they have in there. So I was digging through and I found some rolled up pieces of paper about yay long and they had a rubber band around them. And I said, there's gotta be something of interest in here, surely. And I will now reveal to you what was in these tubes. Uh, some pieces of history I was not expecting to find. The first of which is a full movie poster for Denzel Washington and Julia Roberts in The Pelican Okay, so the strangest thing about this though was that on the back, it's all, uh, it was oh. backwards. Like it oh. said, yeah, so I didn't, I don't understand it. I don't know why they did that. With, it's uh, from an actual movie theater for the light boxes. And I knew that, but I was like, why print on both sides? It's only going to show on one side. It, it, it comes through better because the, it's not going to show the white behind it. It's going to show oh, the okay. as well. Yeah. That makes sense. That so that was, that was the first movie poster. Then I got even more excited because there was a certain pet detective who's going to oh. be <laughs> <laughs> Ace Ventura, pet detective, movie theater poster nice yeah so that was awesome they're so gigantic you forget how big they were back in the day yeah. right like so also in the mix then were some sports posters of like soccer stars you know professional soccer players international stars that are a big deal elsewhere not to me so i set those aside i'm not going to show them to you i don't care i, I assume nobody else cares but 
there was a star that we all care about. This is a poster that was surely on some teenager's wall in the 80s. It is Kevin Bacon from the movie Footloose. Okay, right on the bottom. Oh, wow. It tells you. Kevin oh, Bacon wow. from Footloose. <laughs> Just, yeah. Now my good buddy, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> uh, but the last one here, this was the, I could not believe what I found. This is actually the reason I grabbed it all, just for the, the bonkers nature of it, okay? Because these are all, we have a movie poster, right? That was like more of just kind of like a teen heartthrob poster. This one is a different kind of teen heartthrob poster uh, for a movie that most people don't know much about. This is a full door poster of Johnny Depp in Crybaby. I'm just gonna hold this one up here, okay? Wow. So it, go, it just goes up and get the full Johnny Depp experience. Okay? Wow. I just, this is almost as tall as me. So it's pretty good. But yeah, Johnny Depp and Crybaby, I couldn't believe it, so. I and, and I was picking that up. It was the last week of the trial and everything that I found that. So it was just oh was wow, like, guys. So the coolest thing about this, I'm just going to pull it up here as I close, is at the bottom. It was just kind of cool to see who was selling it. You kind of see this logo here for, and it was a uh, Scorpio Posters. So definitely, it was you know it has like the it says Crybaby it has the little serial number. So definitely something you were ordering out of like tiger beat or so one of those heartthrob magazines <laughs> you get the full-size johnny depp so uh i now own these things what will i do with them hard to say but <laughs> <laughs> now they are here so that was pretty wild i haven't seen yeah. a door poster in forever i haven't it's either I, I don't see posters really at the thrift shops either you know that's just... these have like pinholes in them so they were put up at some point you know and somebody had the notion to donate them instead of just, you know, putting them yeah. in their burn barrel or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> All right. This is it, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Kevin, my apologies. I did not, anything did not pop out at me that you collect, but Adam is so easy to uh, find stuff for, you know? <laughs> so I'll have to look for some vigilante comics and... <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do an Amazon wish list of thrifting stuff. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that, we need a site like that to uh, help each other out. But of course, Adam collects the video discs, right? We all know that by now. Yeah. And, and I saw a stack of them at one store. There was a couple that I movies that I had recognized. Most I didn't. And I think those were uh, maybe a couple bucks a piece or something. Uh, and then, oh no, it was at the uh, department store. So that was on the first floor. I noticed some, and then I went up to the second floor, and there they all were. And I texted Adam right away. Uh, Do you have the Karate Kid? Yes, he has the Karate Kid. Do you have uh, Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon? <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. So he said, "No, give me that one." Yeah. And then these last two. Uh, the last one is the one that I saw first, but he also got Rocky three. These are two discs now. These last two. Yeah. So, Cause I have Rocky one, but I didn't have Rocky three. So I'm like, all right, you got Rocky three. I, I saw this image and I was like, Oh my gosh, I hope he does not have it. It's my favorite Superman, uh -oh. Superman two. Oh, by far. Yeah. I mean, yeah, seeing those, there's there's some, some glorious art on the back as well, and I'm sure it had that on the VHS copies. But actually, there's different art on both. Oh wow, yeah, uh, discs. So that's pretty cool. I didn't even look at the back of Rocky. We need to see if maybe there's different. Nope, same on that one. So that's cool. Those are really cool. Very cool. Yeah, they're surprisingly heavy too. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. like. <laughs> It's like a vital record album, but then encased in thick plastic. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So he, I found those. Um, so he's got those coming his way. Uh, my favorite restaurant, uh, right across the street from my favorite restaurant in Dubois, PA, was a Goodwill. 
and we had about an hour before it closed. So the wife and I went over there. I found five copies of Star Trek The Next Generation episodes still <laughs> sealed. Oh, nice. Still oh. sealed. So, yeah, I was excited to see that. I'll probably put those up on eBay, but yeah. speaking of Star Trek. Uh, along the way, I just found some movies that I wanted to own. One that uh, Adam has requested we might need to do a deal with. There's License to Drive. Yeah. CBS Fox copy there. And that's in pretty good shape. Um, I My favorite Tom Hanks movie of them all, The Burbs. I love this movie. And so, and, Jason, I didn't tell you about this, but that MCA uh -huh. version that you have... That's like the first release, and that goes for way more. Like I sold a later Warner Brothers Shield version; it didn't sell for very much, but that one sells for a lot. So. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm planning to keep it and watch it. That's uh, what I was <laughs> you want to enjoy it, but you'll know the value. Yeah. yeah. And I've been looking. I've I've been wanting to get the Crocodile Dundee and Crocodile Dundee Two on digital, but I'm, screw it. We'll just get them on VHS and watch them back here in the bedroom. Uh, <laughs> So I got that one. And then this one I thought was cool. Uh, I saw Honey, I Shrunk the Kids in theaters. So I, I enjoy the movie. But this also has an episode of uh, Roger Rabbit on there. Yep. So Adam's nodding his head like he knows about this, which I did not know, called Tummy Trouble. Yeah. Um, I thought They're all included. Cool. If you get the Roger Rabbit Blu-ray, all of the shorts that were in front of other movies because they did it on several films and then okay. they're all collected on the blu-ray which is nice yeah i had not remembered that they did that so and then uh a girl at work loves archie's and i found a copy of archie's weird mysteries oh cool <laughs> and they still have they so i said you have a v vcr yes we do so wow um I'm going to, uh, there's just one episode or two uh, on here. It's an hour and 11 minutes, so it's got to be a couple at least. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I had not seen that out there. Okay. Uh, at uh, a thrift store in Harlan, Kentucky, uh, several tapes just jumped at me. First, I've got uh, Still Sealed. And I believe these are the original uh, uh, releases. Hard to Kill and Above the Law. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, they were a dollar a piece. Um, same store. I lost my crap when I saw that. Yes. <laughs> the making of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Behind the Shells. Uh, the special collector's edition, as it says. <laughs> I... Yeah, I was not familiar, and Adam, I know you probably are, but mm -hmm. it's uh, it should be like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two, right? Because no, it's no. got uh, it's got all the it's got yeah. vanilla ice on the back, so yeah. I was confused by that. Yeah, there's definitely something where they were just like, "There's the logo. That's all you need to know. Secret of the use. You don't care." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's a fun one. Same store. Transformers the movie. Yeah. I had a copy that I bought uh, early 2000s, probably, that was in a hard shell mm -hmm. and lent it out and never saw it again. Oh, and I have that, that copy. One. I have the hard shell and that one. Yeah. I was like, well, I, you know, I'll just, I'll find it someday. I know yeah. I will. I've got the Blu ray when it, they put it out on Blu ray. Isn't uh, the one that Jason has the one with the swearing still and the hard shell had edited out? Yeah, I think because I think he has the oh, original really? Rhino release in it. Yeah. Yeah, this is the uh, Kid Rhino home video. Yeah. So they edited that out on one of the releases? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, what is it? Grimlock kick ass or whatever. Like, it's not like it's bad. You know, there's a couple <laughs> in there, but it's all gone from one of the VHS releases. Well, that stinks because I like swearing in movies. Uh, <laughs> this one I knew Adam, I was hoping he also did not have, but this one will come to you. The White Ranger series featuring a special music video where there's smoke, there's fire. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm very excited about that music video. Yes. Yeah, I was Literally, like, I got wow. my Power Rangers right above me here. If you look, so they're <laughs> wow. They're yeah. So 1995. Okay, uh, on to my dad's collection here. <laughs> we'll try to get through these. Uh, Adam, you'll get a kick out of this. We just did a podcast on Ernest Goes to Camp for TR right. Driving. And one of the little fun facts that I found was the uh, barber from the Ernest cartoon, who appears in several of the movies, uh, wrote this bestseller called America's Dumbest Criminals. And then also released a television series which he hosted there it is <laughs> Whoa! Wow. and there he is on the back uh, hosting um daniel cool. butler is his name so my dad he loves cops he loves that kind of reality i've got probably five or six cops uh, too hot for tv <laughs> VHS tapes yeah and action movies he's a huge action movie and western fan so I was not surprised to find that in there, but I snagged it right away. It's really good shape. How about a double header of Chuck Norris, Delta Force, and Delta Force 2? <laughs> yeah. Um, video Treasures. Of course, that's a treasure from 1995. Uh, I don't know why I love this movie so much. Probably because it was filmed in Pittsburgh, but I, I just watched it not too long ago. Striking Distance with Bruce Willis. Uh, found a copy of Stallone First Blood. I was excited to find that. And my dad signed all of these, so we know they're, they're his. I did find <laughs> two tapes that were still sealed. Uh, Wesley Snipes and Dennis Hopper in Boiling Point. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah. This one I was excited about. I don't know what it goes for on eBay. I, sh I should have looked it up. Still has the original Ames price sticker of seven ninety nine, Desperado. Ooh. So there's a good copy. Yeah. And then finally, one more little stack here of just random stuff. I think our friend Chad Young grabbed this one. John Cryer and Dudes <laughs> course, <laughs> had not heard of that movie. Uh, Adam, I think, took this one. Alabama's Greatest Hits. That's right. It's an RCA Columbia. I'm not necessarily an Alabama fan, but I have yeah. those music tapes for them. So that was uh, well. It's still got the original shrink wrap, but it looks like they did uh, take it out at least a couple times to play it. But oh, it's one of the nice. side opening right. one, which is pretty cool. But I love the the box on those as well. I found a uh, video head cleaner. Oh. This is the one with the, uh, the little drops that you put in. Okay, Which of course, I don't have yeah. but yeah, so a little red, you know, circle there. You put the drop a brush in. in there, yeah. The brush, spin the red, yeah. <laughs> I had to grab that just for the fun of it. I, I've got another box of tapes that I told him to save because he had like four boxes. Oh, wow, get rid of the rest. Uh, two that I'm was very excited to find. The first one, Wyatt and I reviewed on our rediscovered series on the Rediscover the 80s podcast. Bailout with David Hasselhoff and Linda Blair. What a cast. <laughs> this movie is so bad. Um, <laughs> so bad it's good. You know, kind of a thing. And then this one, I don't know why I looked on the back, but, uh, you know, Wine and I are huge into mask, and we do uh, mask cast, a podcast, and I've uh, been in that com community uh, for a long time, and uh, our favorite voice actor, of course, is Mr. Doug Stone, who voiced Matt Tracker, and I did not know he did movies before he got into voice acting. Apparently, oh. I'm friends with him on Facebook. I uh, messaged him about Deadly Pursuit. Wow. And I, I recognized his picture on the back there. I was like, that's, and then I read down here, it's Doug Stone. So he, he told me uh, he did three movies for a company in Canada and before he, you know, kind of got into voice acting. So Wyatt and I are going to, I was looking to see if I could find much information about that. It's not on YouTube. Hmm. It's actually a different name, I think, in Canada. So once they imported it, 
um, they changed the name. So I'm going to try to transfer it to YouTube and get it up there. We're going to review it uh, for the podcast. What's even weirder is this is from a store called Video Land in Alpharetta, Georgia. How did it end up in central Pennsylvania? You know, <laughs> <laughs> lots of weirdness going on there. But um, I, I was excited to find that and message him. He said uh, he actually dated his co-star. His that was his wife in there in the movie for a while. So wow. giving some inside information uh, that was just mind blowing to me, and especially that it was in my dad's collection this whole time, and. You know, I would not have known by the, the name of the movie or anything until I got my hands on it and even looked at the back cover. So that was uh, that was a, the find of the whole trip, just finding that movie. And I will get it out there and we'll see how good it is. You know, yeah, that's like, a cool like connection. 1983, he said, 83, 84 was when he was doing those movies. So <laughs> fun, fun, fun stuff in the VHS world. You know, this is why we love it so much. So I think that's about it. Anything else you guys wanted to throw out there before we uh, end this first uh, episode of the second season? No, I think we covered it, man. What a great haul this time around. Oh Just give us a few extra weeks. We come up with the treasure. That's for sure. yeah. <laughs> no kidding. So, all right. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, subscribing. Uh, like I always say in the description is, Links to uh, all of our channels individually, and of course, subscribe to TRN TV. I uh, would love to get your thoughts on what we showed off today. Was there something that kind of uh, jogged a memory, or uh, you know, just stood out to you? I mean, a freaking camcorder, man! I just you just don't see that, and in a good condition, in its original case, case. can't find that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So anyway, I, I'm going to give you the award for winning. Uh, <laughs> the first episode on this one so i accept <laughs> <laughs> all right well we hope you guys will uh, continue to you know check us out here on tier and tv and all the other content that we're putting out there and podcasts and all kinds of stuff on the retro network we're all involved with our own little shenanigans so get involved <laughs> all right until next time we'll see you on the uh, second season of the thrift store horde Take care.